Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We've been discussing welfare economics. In particular, we've been looking at the gains from trade. They're divided between the benefit to the buyers, the sellers, any government revenue or cost of a government, and any effects on anyone else. We've noted that the gains from trade to the buyer is going to be the benefit the buyer gets from the relevant product, less the amount the buyer pays. We've been using a running example with Sarah and the product she's been interested in is apples. We've looked at Sarah's marginal value for those apples. Remember, for example, the marginal value to Sarah of her third apple, which is a dollar, means given that she has two apples, what is the most she is willing to pay for the third apple? Well, that's her marginal value of the third apple, which is a dollar. And we've drawn Sarah's marginal value curve for apples. Remember that, that involves a quantity of apples on the horizontal axis, dollars on the vertical axis, and then we've just plotted the marginal value of Sarah's first apple, the marginal value to Sarah of her second apple, and so on. So the marginal value t curve tells us, given a quantity such as two apples, then the height of the marginal value curve for Sarah at that quantity tells us Sarah's marginal value of the second apple, which is $1.20. So the marginal value curve is a function from quantity into Sarah's marginal value, which is measured in dollars. It's a function from quantity to dollars. And last time we noted that we could read the marginal value curve the other way. In other words, given a particular price, such as 90 cents, if we go across to the marginal value curve from that price, and then go down to the quantity axis, that tells us the number of apples that Sarah would like to buy when the price of apples is 90 cents per apple. But of course that's just our definition of a demand curve. So we noted last time that Sarah's marginal value curve is Sarah's demand curve. So if we go from quantity to dollars, we have Sarah's marginal value curve. If we go from dollars to quantity, if we read the curve the other way, we've got Sarah's demand curve. We defined Sarah's gains from trade, or her consumer surplus, as being the difference between the benefit she receives, which is the area under her marginal value curve, her total value. So for example, for three apples, the area under her marginal value curve is $4.20, which gives her total value from three apples. Her consumer surplus is that total value, less the amount that she pays. Well, if apples are 90 cents each and she buys three apples, then she pays $2.70. So her consumer surplus, or her gains from trade, is her total value, $4.20 from the three apples, less the amount she pays, $2.70, which is $1.50. And we can show that using her marginal value or her demand curve. So the pink shaded area here is Sarah's total value from three apples, which is just the area under her marginal value curve up to three apples. The orange shaded area is just the amount that Sarah pays for the three apples. That's just 90 cents times three apples. And so the black shaded area here, which is just the difference between the total value and the amount that Sarah pays, is just Sarah's consumer surplus from buying three apples at 90 cents per apple. And we know that that's equal to exactly $1.50. Notice that because Sarah's marginal value curve is her demand curve, we can also describe the consumer surplus as the area under Sarah's demand curve, above the price that Sarah pays, up to the quantity of apples that Sarah consumes. So let's summarise our results so far. Consumer surplus is the buyer's share of gains from trade. Consumer surplus is simply the difference between what buyers would have been willing to pay at most and what they actually have to pay. And because the marginal value curve is the demand curve, a person's consumer surplus is simply the area under the demand curve, above the price that the consumer pays, up to the quantity of the product that the consumer purchases. To see how to use this rule, 
Let's go back to our example of Sarah paying 90 cents per apple, but let's imagine there's a law that says it's illegal to buy more than two apples. So at a price of 90 cents per apple, Sarah would like to buy three apples. She can't. She'll be arrested, sent off to prison if she does that. So she will only buy the maximum of two apples. What's her consumer surplus or her gain from trade? Well, Sarah can only get gains from trade or consumer surplus on apples that she actually buys and consumes. So if she's only buying and consuming two apples, she can only get consumer surplus on two apples. The pink area here represents Sarah's total value from buying two apples. It's the area under her demand curve or the area under her marginal value curve up to the quantity of two apples. And we know that that's $2 plus $1.20 or $3.20. Of course, if Sarah's only buying two apples at 90 cents per apple, she's only paying for two apples. So the blue area here represents the amount that Sarah pays for those two apples. It's 90 cents times two apples or $1.80. So the difference between those two shaded areas, which is simply the black shaded area here, is Sarah's consumer surplus from buying two apples at 90 cents per apple. Note that Sarah's consumer surplus is now her total benefit, 320, less the cost of 180, which is $1.40. So the black shaded area is $1.40 consumer surplus to Sarah. Of course, notice that this is less than the amount of consumer surplus that Sarah made when she bought three apples, the amount she would like to buy at a price of 90 cents. The difference is simply this little rectangle over here. That was the extra surplus that Sarah was able to gain by buying the extra apple at 90 cents. She valued it at a dollar. She only had to pay 90 cents. So she got 10 cents worth of extra surplus from the third apple. She can't get that now because it's illegal for her to buy three apples. She can only buy two apples, and that gives her a consumer surplus of $1.40. So when a consumer faces a uniform price, or in other words, they're a price taker, we can get that consumer's consumer surplus by looking at the area under the consumer's demand curve, above the price the consumer pays, up to the actual quantity they purchase. Now in general that will be given where price hits demand but remember you can't get consumer surplus off items you don't actually buy and consume so if there's a law or some other restriction that stops a person from having the amount that they would like to have you only measure the consumer surplus on what they actually get not what they would like to get. That's all for now. We've looked at individual consumer surplus Next time, we look at market consumer surplus.